Hello and welcome to another Lead Code Solution video. This is problem number 47, Permutations 2. This problem, we're given a collection of numbers, nums, that might contain duplicates. Return all possible unique permutations in any order. For example, one, we're given an input nums array of 112, so our output would be 112, 121, and 211. For example, two, we're given an input nums array of 123, so our output would be 123, 132, 213, 231, 312, and 321. Let's go through an example. For this example, we're given an input nums array of 1, 2, 4, 4. This problem is very similar to the last permutations problem, except the main difference is before we add a permutation to our result output, we're going to check to see if we've already added it to our result output. If it's not in there already, we'll add it. Otherwise, we'll just skip it because it's a duplicate. And we're also going to be using backtracking again to get all possible permutations. So first thing we'll do is get all possible permutations with 1 as our first value. Then we'll add our second value, which would be 2. Then we'll add our third value, which would be 4. And finally, we'll add our fourth value, which is 4 again. So we have 1, 2, 4, 4 as our first permutation. Now we'll backtrack. So we'll backtrack to where we had 1, 2, 4. And we've already used all possible values in our last index, so we'll backtrack again. So now we're back to where we had 1, 2 as our permutation. And we'll want to try adding our other possible number here. So when we add 4 again, our permutation is the same as our last permutation. So when we're adding it to our result value and checking to see if this already exists in our result list, we'll see that it's a duplicate and skip it. So then at this point, we'll backtrack again. We've exhausted all possibilities when we have 1, 2 as our first two values, and we'll backtrack again. So now we're at the point where we just have 1 in our permutation, and we'd move on to adding 4 in our second index and continue through getting all possible permutations. And once we go through all our backtracking and all possible permutations, this would be our output. Let's jump into the code. First thing we're gonna to wanna to do is define our backtracking function. And we'll pass one value to this function and it will be our start variable. And our start variable will be used to keep track of where we're starting our current permutation. And it'll be the index we'll backtrack to when we're trying to find new permutations. Next, we want to check to see if our start variable is equal to the length of our nums list. And if it is equal, that means we're at the end of our permutation. And we'll want to append our current permutation to our result and return. Next, we'll want to create our unique set variable. And this will be a set variable type that we'll use to make sure all of our permutations are unique. Next, we'll want to loop through our nums list, starting from our start value to the length of our nums list. And the first thing we want to do now in our loop is check to see if our current nums at our index i is already in our unique set or not. And if it is, we just want to continue because we want to skip the duplicate. And if it's not in the unique set, we'll want to add it to the unique set. Then at this point, we'll want to swap our current value at our start index with our current value at our i index. Then call our backtracking function again with our start value plus 1. And then swap back the value at nums of start and the value at nums of i. And we're doing that to swap two values to try all possible permutations with those values swapped and then swapping them back. And that's it for our backtracking function. So we'll go through and finish up our permutation function. And the first thing we want to do is define our result variable. And this will just be used to store all of our permutations. And next we'll want to call our backtracking function and we'll kick it off with our start value being equal to zero. And finally, we'll just return a result. That's it for the code, so let's run this. I had one small syntax error. I accidentally put a comma instead of an equal sign when swapping the numbers the second time. That should fix our solution, so let's run this again. All test case passed, so let's submit. Our solution was accepted, so that's it for this problem. If you like this video and want to see more content like it, make sure to check out my channel. Thanks for watching.